Seriously, Tina, when will you learn? How many times have I told you before you do anything in this house, you must consult me first. I'm sorry, Marmar. I just moved Jessica's stuff, so I can get some space for my own stuff too. This behavior must stop. You're not the mother in this house, I am. So you need to show me some respect in this house. You know your sister does not like her stuff to be moved or touched. You know that very well. So stop. You know what I can do to you. Your father is not here. Don't push me. I'm sorry, Marma. It won't happen again. Tina. 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 Every time Tina. This little girl. Instead of her listening to my instruction, but no. She want to do things her own way, like this is her house. I'll be teaching her a very good lesson now. If this behavior continues. My precious daughter and I are not in peace because of her. What's this? Let me get some work done. Otherwise, I'll not get my work done on time. Where is my lunch now? I'm starving and nobody even cares about me. Mama! Mama! Where's mom, by the way? Let me go and find her. Now what? These girls. I can't get some work done here. What's this? What now? Jessica come here, I'm at the office upstairs. Mama, Mama. Jessica calm down, okay my angel. You know I don't like it when you are angry. Tell me. What's wrong? I see there is nothing for me to eat. Only that sandwich I see on the table. I can't eat that. And leftover food still in the fridge, I'm not touching it more. I want to eat good cooked meal. I don't even know where Tina is. It's okay my angel. Mama is just busy now. But tell that lazy sister of your Tina to make you something to eat. Tell her I say so. Okay, mama. I'll tell Tina, but you know she does not listen to me. You know that. If she does not want, come and tell me. She will see what I'll do to her. What are you doing inside my room? I've been looking for you everywhere around the house. Jessica. I'm not your friend to talk to me like that. I'm your big sister. So show some respect, okay? If dad was here also you would have opened your big mouth to me like that. And beside I have the right to be in this room. Anywhere I'm just cleaning up. Marmer want to see the whole house clean including your room. I don't know why Marmer treats me like I'm not her daughter. Like she really hate me or something. And you, her precious daughter, and you happy also. What you want by the way? You were shouting all the way from downstairs. And I heard you talking to Marmer upstairs. Mama say you must make me something to eat. But Jessica, I made you sandwiches in the kitchen on the coffee table. Just eat that we will go shopping later then I will cook as always. And you and Marmer will doing your own things. I can't cook now and later again cook. I'm not a machine you know. Me. I'm starving. I want to eat and I can't eat that leftover food. I'm going to tell Mama that you have refused to cook for me. My God. What have I done to serve all of this hearted? 
why my mother and my sister are treating me like this. Did I do something to offend them? If I did my lord please forgive me. I just want to be happy with my family. I'm like a slave in this house. My own mother beats me, say means things to me like I'm not her daughter. Just Jessica, who she cares all about. Why me? Oh by the way. While you are cooking, Mama say don't take forever here. We'll need to go shopping soon. And please make quickly with the food. I don't want to die of starvation. Okay. I'm almost finished. You eat soon. Jessica make sure that your sister buy only the items on the grocery list. Okay mama. I'll keep my eyes on her. Where she by the way with that trolley? I don't want what happened last week to repeat again today. And where is this cashier since we've been waiting for her to check for the cheese price? Mama is Tina cooking. Yes, Jessica. You starving my angel. Don't worry whatever you want just tell me okay. I'll make sure you get it. Are you happy with the stuff I bought for you? Yes, Mama. I'm. Thanks. Tina. How are far you with the food? We are starving you know. Please make it quick there and make sure after cook leave that kitchen clean. Okay mama. I'll make sure I clean the place. I don't know what this girl is cooking. What's taking her so long to finish to cook? Mama you know how Tina cooks. She always take her time. Like this lunch she made me this afternoon I almost fainted. She took forever to finish. You better just go check on her. Otherwise, we are sleeping hungry. You're right, Jessica. Let me go and check on her. The way I'm starving, she does not know. Tina, what this mess all about? Look at this place. Why are you cooking like this and yet you dim the lights? How are you cooking? I'm almost done to cook, Mama. And the kitchen is not dirty. Don't talk back when I'm talking, young girl. How dare you? You disrespect me in my house. Finish up and clean this place. Come serve our food on the table. We are not going to starve because of you. Why just me God? Why me? What did I really do to this family to deserve this? The next day, the girl's mother felt sick and was admitted to the hospital and was seriously sick and unable to move or do anything at all. The girl's mother favorite daughter, Jessica, refused to go see her mother at the hospital. When their mother was back at home being taken care by the nurses her favorite daughter did nevertheless care about her mother. Tina was the only girl looking after their mother at all times. Eventually their mother apologized to Tina. Her firstborn whom she ill-treated. Tina accepted her mother's apology. The End Saki. This is a story of Kazadi, a young boy who always dreamed of having a white Jordan Taki. Sadly, his parents couldn't afford to buy him one. His father was a shoemaker and his mother domestic worker. Kazadi was in primary school. Every Friday, the school obliged all learners to be on Takis and Kazadi couldn't attend school because he did not have a pair of white tackies. Oh 
all he was doing, he was making excuses of being sick or sometimes telling his teacher he had a transport problem. Savari, my child, where were you on Friday? You were again not in school. Kazadi was a very smart boy. Everybody in his family liked him a lot, including all the children and teachers from his school. As Christmas was approaching, the school principal announced that they will have a Christmas event and all the children must look presentable. Kazadi was one of the smartest boys. His teacher chose him for the speech on Christmas Day. So came that day. So glad he was but couldn't show his excitement because he knew he didn't have his favorite tacky. One day, just a month before Christmas, his aunt Susan came visit and found Kazadi in a sad mood. She asked him if everything was okay. He shook his head, then put down his face. Aunt Susan touched him on his chin and asked him again, Is everything okay, my little boy? Then she pulled up his face and saw tears coming from Kazadi's eyes. You know, Kazadi, you can tell me anything you know that, right? The boy was hopeless and said, I can't have a tacky. Why? Why can't you have a tacky? You can have a tacky, Kazadi. Did your mom and dad say you can't have one? No, he replied. It's just that I never had one before. I always miss school on Friday because I don't have a tacky and soon it is going to be Christmas and I don't know what I will wear. All my friends have their tackies. Aunt Susan looked at the small boy, touched his head and smiled. Poor boy, she said. Today I'm taking you to a shopping mall. You can have a tacky for Christmas. Really? He shouted, but the boy turned down his face. What's wrong? Are you not excited? Aunt Susan asked. The boy turned down his face. Can I please get a white Jordan tacky? Yes, of course, anything you want you can have, Aunt Susan. Very happy, the boy took his jacket, jumped and went to the shopping mall with his aunt to get his new tacky. Later he went home. Mom, mom, screamed Kazadi. I got the tacky. Shh, his mom said. Come close so I can see what you have with you. She laughed at the boy. Do you want to see it? He asked his mom. First guess what kind of tacky it is. He was very happy and started to tease his mom. I know it's a white Jordan tacky. Yippee! They all screamed. Look, I will keep it for you in a very safe place. You only going to have it on Christmas Day. At night, Kazadi couldn't fall asleep. He was dreaming about his new tacky. Early morning, Kazadi went to see his friends door to door asking each parent if he can see his friends and told them about his new Jordan tacky. We want to see it, they told him. It was on a Sunday Kazadi asked his mom if he can wear his tacky. No, his mom replied, you know you can only wear it on Christmas Day. You can't have it before Christmas.
I was alone. All alone living on an isolated life. I had sisters, nieces and cousins that I could talk to but I was not comfortable to share my some problems with them. I needed someone like a friend, someone not from my family member. Someone that I can feel free being around together talking about anything and not being shy or scared to say about something. Someone that I will be openly to and share my problems with. Until one day, I met Bridget. She was a new girl from my building. She was so friendly and had a sense of humor. That's what made me to get interested towards her. On the first day we spoke to each other. We told each other's name and exchanged the phone numbers. We spoke to each other every day, morning and night times. Our friendship became stronger. We started sharing handbags, clothes and some of my deepest secret that I never shared with anyone before. I started to share them with Bridget. Without knowing, our friendship were not what I was seeing. I introduced her even to Jay. Jay was my first life boyfriend. He was tall, black and curly hair. Jay was a very handsome guy. He was living just opposite to my building. Every girl around my area had a crush on him. Jay was the best thing I had in my life. He was my first love. I never imagined myself to love someone else the way I loved him. After three years of my friendship with Bridget. My trust to her grew more and more, caused at the time she showed me that she was there for me and shared my secret. I started to let her get closer to Jay, even letting them go to many events without me. I was only 19 years old and naive. Jay was seven years older than me and Bridget was nine years older than me. She had much life experience than I had. One Saturday evening, I was invited to a family friend wedding party. I told Jay to take me to the venue. He took me without hesitated, he gave me a goodbye kiss then left. My evening was so good. I had a lot of fun. An hour without checking on Jay over the phone. The next day morning, as usual we call to check on each other. I then call him, something was strange. The way he responded to me made me worried. He sounded strange as if something was wrong with him. After our conversation over the phone, I couldn't wait then went to meet with him face to face. The moment I looked at him on the eyes. I noticed something was wrong. Since we knew each other for a very long time. I took time trying to ask him, how he was feeling at that moment. The way he looked at me, it was as if I was a total stranger to him. He looked at me in my eyes and told me in a serious way that. No matter how long we will be together, there is no future between us. Since he does not want to waste my time, it will be better for me if I can find my way out of our relationship.
My friend. How you doing? The only miss that lot it is yeah. My friend, I'm doing okay. Thanks. Just nothing to complain about. You know how things are going really hectic at school. We've been busy my friend. That's true my friend. From the looks of things. We are getting busy indeed my friend. Yo. I'm even getting exhausted when I get home. Anywhere my friend how's your man, Elvis? He's doing not too bad. Anywhere my friend let us start going before we get late for our classes. We can talk on the way. Yeah, let's walk. My friend speak about Elvis. I didn't tell you, he's going through a rough time. He's a fighter that's one thing about him that I love. He's trying his best so we can be together and have a better life. At least he's trying that good. Yeah Elvis indeed is a fighter. You guys can pull through it. You just need to be strong for him and motivate him not to give up in life. Life is like that, my friend. You have to fight for a better future. Yeah, no. I'm trying even tough, it's not easy, my friend. We are trying to be strong. My friend, have you that those two men over there keep on looking at us? I don't like them, they look scary, my friend. Yes. My friend, I have noticed. I was just not paying attention to them. What are you looking at? Starting on the other side. Wow Jack. Beautiful ladies like that are hard to find. See that two ladies walking around there. See especially the dark complexion girl. She's very pretty. I'll be going to ask her out for a date. She'll be my future wife. Look they are getting closer this side. Wave at them. Don't look at me Jack. Wave at them. Look at them. Are they waving at us? It looks like it. Don't even wave back at them. I think I must go talk to her. Come let's go. What? You're not serious. You don't know that girl. Her name is Ted Lottetes. She's the most beautiful girl around here and in her school. So don't even waste your time on her. This girl is not easy at all. She rejected even the son of the president. And you think you can win her? Let's just get in the car and go. They got some nerve. Anywhere maybe they likes you my friend. For me my heart belongs to Elvis. He's my soulmate. No matter what we are going through even the struggles. I know we will make it in life. And no man will come and replace him in my heart. My friend, but sometimes you must also see how things are going. Ask yourself where you're heading in life because that is very important. Your needs also matters. You can't continue to reject every man that are coming to you just for Elvis. See they are going to school. Don't try that girl cause you will run up and down for nothing. And if I may ask Jack. Where do you know all these stuff from about this girl Tetla Tetarize? Ami. I know my ways in and out. Isn't that Elvis? What's he doing here? My love I've been looking for you everywhere. Guess what my love? I have good news my. Angel, we are going to London my love. 
I got the job I applied years ago only now they send me. Letter confirming that I got the job. So we are moving to London my love. I'm so happy my love. So we are really moving to London. Yeah. Yes, mom, she's the one that I want to marry. Just go meet with her family, you and dad. Anything they will say, tell me I will do it. I'm ready to pay for everything so she can join me here. Can I speak to you for a moment? Yes, for sure. Is there something wrong? I've spoken with my parents today. I don't want you to be surprises. I'm getting married. I'm leaving. I have found a very young and a beautiful girl virgin lady. In few days, I will be paying her bride price then she will have to come to live here with me. So, you have more time to start to prepare yourself to get a place. But, Moses. We have three kids together, now you want to leave me and the kids? But you need to face reality. We have kids together yes. That doesn't mean I have to spend my whole life with you. You still young you can still get someone else. In case finding a place of your own is a problem. I will be the one leaving the house then. Don't worry you will get everything, I will not get a thing in this house, all of it you can keep for you and care for our kids. Okay. Finally so I can go to the woman that I wanted, the girl of my dreams. But Moses, please, don't do this to us. We belong together. You, the kids and me. We have all we need here. We are family. No. I'm done here. You are the woman of my dreams. Where were you all this time in my life? Here in your heart waiting on you to remember me. Now that you did. Here I am. You can do whatever you want. Isn't tomorrow your first checkup in the hospital? Yes, it is. I completely have forgotten too. Thanks for reminding me again. Let me sleep. I must wake up early morning. I knew it will be by these week Thursday. I even told my manager and requested a day off from work. No, why? You can go to work. I can manage. Never, I cannot let my baby go through all the steps alone. You are HIV positive ma'am. I'm sorry to tell you this. What? How sister? Please call my husband for me. Your husband is on his way. You bastard, you want to kill me. You affected me with your HIV. No. Never, me. HIV. Calm down my sister. You can get treatment and live a longer life. But I did my test and that was four months ago and I was negative. Here is the test results and I always keep a copy in my phone. I can prove it to you. Here it is. See for yourself nurse. Do you want to do another test now? Yes, for sure.
HiveMedical.com. Sorry Sophia apparently your husband is HIV negative. Don't worry we have consultation, we can assist. I can confess. Sorry my husband. I was never a virgin. Sorry that I lied. My mum put me in all of this mess. I was dating this other guy before you and I got together. I think it's where I contracted the virus. I'm so sorry my husband. What? Oh, no. Sophia sorry for what? We are done. You have made my life a mess now. And I thought that I have made the right decision by marrying you. My wife listen. I was in a hurry to marry again. I did not know what I was doing, I'm so sorry to what I have done to you and our kids. It's okay my husband. I have forgiven you already. Story is about a young girl whom everyone were making fun of her at school, not knowing what she was going through. Back to school, every children were excited to go back to school except Mbali. She was happy to start school but not excited like other kids. Her mother were diagnosed with kidney cancer, no one knew about it. She became unable to do anything. Mbali had to clean her mother, siblings and do the house chores. Every time when she go to school other kids will laugh at her since her uniform were always dirty. R, R, R look at this one. I don't think I will seat next to her this year. Me too. Yo. Why are they whispering over there? Look at them. Hey. Mbali. Sorry you cannot seat in front row in my class. Go seat at the back. That's my table number sir. The principal said so. Now you listen to me. This is my class and you will do as I say. Now, I said so. You don't deserve to be in front. The front seat is for the one that are more neat and smart. Bali. What's going on my baby? You don't seem happy. I don't think I can go back to school again. Everyone are calling me names but mum I'm really feeling bad to see you in this situation. Also I must look after Sophia and Tony. It's difficult to focus on myself but why no one like me? Why they hate me mum? They don't hate you. You are a very good girl. No one will hate you. Be strong for your brother and sister. Give me some water Bali. Mum here is the water, Mum. Mum. Can you talk to me please? Mum.
Bali come here. Why are you coming to school at this time? Hum hum I I. What is I I? Look at you. Very dirty. Your uniform not iron. Your hair not done. Your school bag one side is broken. You don't deserve to be in my classroom. Go. Maybe you can ask your mom to register you to another school. Not here anymore. Just look at you. Actually this school bag you see broken. It's not my books inside but clothes for my siblings and I because after school. We need to go look for a place to sleep. My mum passed away one week ago. We just buried her. I had no one to do my hair and my uniform I couldn't die in it. After burying my mum. Since I don't deserve to be in this school anymore, I will sit home. I have no parent to register me at another school. Oh, sorry Mbali. I'm sorry for your loss. I'm very sorry Mbali. Seriously? Tina. When will you learn? How many times have I told you before you do anything in this house, you must consult me first. I'm sorry Marma. I just moved Jessica's stuff, so I can get some space for my own stuff too. This behavior must stop. You're not the mother in this house, I am. So you need to show me some respect in this house. You know your sister does not like her stuff to be moved or touched. You know that very well. So stop. You know what I can do to you. Your father is not here. Don't push me. I'm sorry Marma. It won't happen again. Tina. 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 Every time Tina. This little girl. Instead of her listening to my instruction, but no. She want to do things her own way, like this is her house. I'll be teaching her a very good lesson now. If this behavior continues. My precious daughter and I are not in peace because of her. What's this? Let me get some work done. Otherwise, I'll not get my work done on time. Where is my lunch now? I'm starving and nobody even cares about me. Mama! Mama! Where's mom, by the way? Let me go and find her. Now what? These girls. I can't get some work done here. What's this? What now? Jessica come here, I'm at the office upstairs. Mama, Mama. Jessica calm down, okay my angel. You know I don't like it when you are angry. Tell me. What's wrong? I see there is nothing for me to eat. Only that sandwich I see on the table. I can't eat that. And leftover food still in the fridge, I'm not touching it mom. I want to eat good cooked meal. I don't even know where Tina is. It's okay my angel. Mama is just busy now. But tell that lazy sister of your Tina to make you something to eat. Tell her I say so. Okay, mama. I'll tell Tina, but you know she does not listen to me. You know that. If she does not want, come and tell me. She will see what I'll do to her. What are you doing inside my room? I've been looking for you everywhere around the house. Jessica. I'm not your friend to talk to me like that. I'm your big sister. 
So show some respect, okay? If dad was here also you would have opened your big mouth to me like that. And beside I have the right to be in this room. Anywhere I'm just cleaning up. Marmer want to see the whole house clean including your room. I don't know why Marmer treats me like I'm not her daughter. Like she really hate me or something. And you, her precious daughter, and you happy also. What you want by the way. You were shouting all the way from downstairs. And I heard you talking to Marmer upstairs. Mama say you must make me something to eat. But Jessica, I made you sandwich it's in the kitchen on the coffee table. Just eat that we will go shopping later then I will cook as always. And you and Marmer will doing your own things. I can't cook now and later again cook. I'm not a machine you know. Me. I'm starving. I want to eat and I can't eat that leftover food. I'm going to tell Mama that you have refused to cook for me. My God. What have I done to serve all of this hearted? Why my mother and my sister are treating me like this? Did I do something to offend them? If I did my lord please forgive me. I just want to be happy with my family. I'm like a slave in this house. My own mother beats me, say means things to me like I'm not her daughter. Just Jessica, who she cares all about. Why me? Oh by the way, while you are cooking, Mama say don't take forever here. We'll need to go shopping soon. And please make quickly with the food. I don't want to die of starvation. Okay. I'm almost finished. You eat soon. Jessica make sure that your sister buy only the items on the grocery list. Okay Mama. I'll keep my eyes on her. Where she by the way with that trolley? I don't want what happened last week to repeat again today. And where is this cashier since we've been waiting for her to check for the cheese price? Mama is Tina cooking. Yes, Jessica. You starving my angel. Don't worry whatever you want just tell me okay. I'll make sure you get it. Are you happy with the stuff I bought for you? Yes, Mama. I'm. Thanks. Tina. How are far you with the food? We are starving, you know. Please make it quick there and make sure after cook leave that kitchen clean. Okay, Mama. I'll make sure I clean the place. I don't know what this girl is cooking. What's taking her so long to finish to cook? Mama, you know how Tina cooks. She always take her time. Like this lunch she made me this afternoon I almost fainted. She took forever to finish. You better just go check on her. Otherwise we are sleeping hungry. You right Jessica. Let me go and check on her. The way I'm starving she does not know. Tina what this mess all about. Look at this place. Why are you cooking like this and yet you dim the lights? How are you cooking? I'm almost done to cook Mama. And the kitchen is not dirty. Don't talk back when I'm talking young girl. How dare you? You disrespect me in my house. Finish up and clean this place. Come serve our food on the table. We are not going to. Starve because of you. Why just me God? Why me? What did I really do to this family to deserve this? The next day, the girl's mother felt sick and was admitted to the hospital and was seriously sick and unable to move or do anything at all. The girl's mother favorite daughter, Jessica, refused to go see her mother at the hospital. When their mother was back at home being taken care by the nurses her favorite daughter did nevertheless care about her mother. 
Tina was the only girl looking after their mother at all times. Eventually their mother apologized to Tina. Her firstborn whom she ill-treated. Tina accepted her mother's apology. The End There was once a father with his teen daughter by the name of Angela. Angela was a very sweet young girl. Her mother passed away just after giving birth to her. There was complication occurred when Angela's mother was giving birth to her. The doctor could not save both the mother and the daughter. Angela's father raised her by himself and made her feel like a little angel. He raised her till she was mature. Angela's father didn't want to rush into marriage yet, he waited for his little angel to grow up first for him to get married again. One day Angela's father called her to have a chat. As they always do, but this time the chat was different. Angela's dad said, My daughter, I have some good news to share with you. Remember the last time we had a chat and I asked you how you would feel about me getting married again? Yes dad, I remember very well. Okay. I've been thinking about that and I have decided to get married again. To give you a new mother. Dad, I have no problem on that. I'm just concerned of the type of person my new mommy would be. I just want someone who will love me and treat me as their own daughter. Don't worry my angel. This new mommy will treat you as her own. Nobody will mistreat you. Okay, my angel. I'll always be there for you. Okay daddy. If that will make you happy. I'm happy too. The moment Angela's stepmother arrived home. Things had changed in the house. Angela had noticed that her father does not spend much time with her anymore. He always busy with new wife. Hello auntie. You welcome home. Hello Angela. Oh, thank you very much. Whenever I just want to spend time with my dad, my stepmother always seemed to be in the way. She will distract my dad or tries to send me to do something else. House became a place that I no long wanted to be at. I stated to feel depressed and bored. The only place I was enjoying was at school playing with my best friend Jackie. Being at school was the only time I felt free like I was not being told to do this and that but also at the same time tiring because I was not focusing at my school work. By the time I just step my foot at home I will not rest till night falls. I was not the same child as I was when it was just my dad and I. My stepmother came and things are not the same. I thought my stepmother will be different from what I always hear from friends, how they stepmother mistreat them. My stepmother was the mean person ever and cruel. She'll give me chores to do throughout the day. In the morning before I go to school, I had to make sure that the house is clean and by the time I get to school I'm exhausted. I sometimes get to school very late or sometimes I just don't go because she stops me from going to school. She always tell me school is not good for me and that I'm a failure. She makes me do all the chores at home and if I don't, she punishes me and I can go two to three days without eating. My dad has forgotten his promises to me. He has been blinded by love. When my dad comes from work, I don't get to see him. My life been miserable ever since my stepmother came in our lives. I so miss my mom. Mom, why? You left us too soon. You still here? I thought you left the classroom already. Are you still studying? Hi Mr. Day. No sir. I'm still here. I just don't feel like going to play with my friends. I wanted to be just alone. Oh, okay. I see. 
Your friends are enjoying the break time, I passed by the cafeteria area saw them having their lunch. I see, okay sir. Ken. You've been so distanced from school recently and marks are dropping. What's going on? Is everything okay at home? Yes Mr. Dave, everything all good at home. I've been just tired that's all. Okay. If you say so Ken. But try your best to improve on your marks. You know we are heading at the end of the semester. Yes Mr. Dave, will do my best sir. Also Mr. Dave I've been meaning to ask you about science project. Who will I work with? Oh, yes. Thank you for reminding me. Come and see me after class. Mr. Dave said my marks are dropping. I need to pay more attention in class. It's almost the year end. I can't afford to lose marks. Yes Steve. No. I won't be able to make it. I'm meeting Mr. Dave later after school for the science project. Cool man. Pay attention class. Next week, you're starting with your assessment. So start preparing yourself. Your science partner is on his way. He's probable in his way. Okay, Mr. Dave, I'll wait for him. Hi, Mr. Dave. Sorry I'm late. I was just wrapping up from another class. You said I should see you after class. Okay, no worries. Yes. I wanted you to meet Lydia. She's your classmate. I chose her to work with you in this project. If you guys focus, you'll make the top 10 students. Hmm, Mr. Dave. I don't think we will make a good team. I'm not concentrating well these days. Me too Mr. Dave. I've spoken with Kevin. I think I'm going to join him for the project. No, Kevin is not improving in his work. You two are just perfect and I know you guys can pull this through if you work together. You were supposed to be here at 12 p.m. Now it's 20 minutes late. If you keep on raising your voice, I'll leave this place. You can leave then. Anyway, you are not a great partner for this project. What you want here, you said, I'm not a perfect partner. I'm very sorry for what I said. Please let us be a team again. I love you and I miss having you around. I miss you too. A few years back, I was not myself. I felt like I was being controlled, not by anybody but by myself. Every time or whenever I want to do something I always end up doing the opposite. Not what I want to do but what my inner monster wanted. I became frustrated. I end up fighting with people not by my own intention. At school when my friends came to me, I felt very excited. We played along together well with my friends. As we played together at the end of the game, I'll end up fighting them. When the principal or teacher came to punish us, they will send us to detention for hours.
at my street where I lived. All the parents did not want their kids to play with me, not because they hated me but because of my strange behavior. They all started to say that I had a monster in me. I started to feel bad, secretly I was doing my best to fight this strange feeling in me but I couldn't because it was so powerful controlling me. I was scared to share this with anybody including my family members. I became just not myself anymore when this monster was in control. When the monster was in control, I did not recognize anybody. The only time I felt good was when I was doing bad things or mistreating people. I became violent and I was not able to be around people. Until one day I decide to share this strange feeling of mind control monster in me with my mom. My mother then took me to Uncle Frank. Uncle Frank was a powerful church man. After meeting with Uncle Frank, we had an hour meeting and he prayed for me. I felt so good to express myself to him. He was doing the follow-up on me day and night, seven days a week. Till I became free from the mind control monster that was in me. Morning, Mom. Morning, John. Is everything okay? Are you ready for school? Yes, Mom, I'm ready. Today we're having a school project after school. I will come back home late. Late like? What time? Past five. Because we finishing school at four. Okay. John, when you come back, you'll find the house keys under the mat. Hey, John. Your mom always calls you after school what happened today? Me too, I was about to ask same thing. I had to come up with a plan. Before coming to school today I lied to my mom, we are staying for extras lesson and guess what? She even gave me some money to stay longer. <laughs> Hi, this is Mrs. Barnett speaking. What? Where? When? How? Okay, I'm on my way, coming there right now. Good day. Hi ma'am. I'm here to see my boy whom was admitted this afternoon, along with two other schoolmates. Oh, I see. What's your child's name? John Duffa. John Duffa. He's in room A305. Thanks. But John, how did you end up here? You told me you will stay at school for your school project. How did you get yourself at Boy Square and drinking? For what I heard from the school principal, you all left school very early at 12 o'clock. Instead of you to tell me the truth, you lied to me. You see now look at you laying on the hospital bed all your friends last their lives after the accident. When are you going to stop to lie? I'm very sorry mom. I won't lie to you anymore. And I will never lie to anyone either. If I was truthful, all this could have not happened to me or my friends. Forgive me. I swear to always tell the truth. Forgive me mom. I've been walking and walking for 50,000 miles away from my home, looking for a better life. 
My first time to leave home. I was very excited knowing that I will realize of myself and 50% of my dreams after arriving in a foreign land. The first thing came in my mind that moment when I arrived was like will I be able to make it here. First of all, I started to miss my home food. Which I used to eat anytime and any day I wanted to. Here I must wait for drivers that are coming from my home country so I will buy from them. It's very expensive buying from them as those food here are rare. Then I started missing my family and my friends. Everything was as strange as it was my very first time. After so many years away from home, I then decided to go back home. It wasn't that easy going back without getting what I wanted but still it made me feel so happy. Finally I'm going back to where I belong. I'm missing my favorite grapefruit as it's what I will eat first when I arrived home then will make my everyday green tea and go see my friends Lark and Sebastian. I don't think that I will leave my hometown again. You're right. Me too. I'm missing home. Steve, you're up next. Tell the class your story. Okay, Mr. Joe. Hi, everybody. The title of the story is called My Uncle's Bicycle. Uncle Tom had a huge bicycle. He never allowed us to use it. Not even his favorite pet was allowed to sit next to it. No one was allowed to ride Uncle's Tom bicycle. Now, I became curious each and every day. I felt like I must ride it. On Sunday, everybody was out. My mother and my father went to church. On that early Sunday morning, Aunt Rihanna went to fetch her new shoes at the park station. Uncle Tom went out with his friend. His bike was left at the background and tied it with a big chain. I had to figure out how to unchain it and ride before Uncle Tom come back home. Yeah! I managed to unchain it. I was riding at the whole town. I saw my friend Tad. While riding, I called him to join me. Tad asked me is that Uncle Tom's bike? I said yes. He asked me what did I do to let Uncle Tom to allow me to ride his bike. I replied to him that I managed to take it. Uncle Tom was not around in town. As we were riding, we had a sound like a pouncher sound. Oh, oh, oh no. Man. My goodness. Tad are we going to do now? The tire was damaged. Tad suggested we take the bike to the Wiseman to get a new tire. On our way back home from the Wiseman, we went immediately to return the bicycle. As we were approaching the house, we saw Uncle Tom outside the corner of the house and waited patiently to see if Uncle Tom might leave so we can return the bicycle. As we waited patiently, Uncle Tom continued to chat to his friend. We then come with a plan. Tad to go distract Uncle Tom. Well I left the bicycle in the corner. And had to go get the chain. By the time I came back to get the bicycle. The bicycle was no way to be found. After searching every way I realized that the bicycle was stolen. Well that's my story class. Wow, Steve. I'm impressed. That was a wonderful story. You may sit down now. The st story opens up where Joe visited Michael again after a few years back. Joe came to seek help to Michael because Michael's dad was an engineer back in his days. He was working for a big company that dealt with robots. He was the main engineer in charge. When Michael's dad passed away he taught his son Michael about everything he knew on robots, the invisibilities on robots function part and how to create some of these part. Joe trusted Michael just as much as he trusted his dad. They became best friends. I thought I won't see you again, Joe. Especially after the last mission. No need to worry, Michael. I will always be there for you when you need me. Like I told you before, just call and I will be there. You know the last mission we had here on Earth. You're the one we should always thank. My people and I are truly grateful for your help. You know I can bring the whole arm of robots including the Android 5 and 6 here on Earth, and those are our new army of soldiers. They are very tough. Seriously? Wow Joe. That's great news, new army. 
I can't wait to meet them. You will. I will take you there to see them and beside we will need you also to clean up. Remember the disaster we had. Disaster? Michael remembers the time he was in the Revolution Square assisting Joe and his people that were under attack by the yellow android. Listen to me people, I know we are all furious and upset. But we are trying our uttermost best to get the issue resolved. So I plead to you to calm down. We are handling this situation. Please listen to me, people. I recently visited a friend of mine by the name of Michael. He's going to help us defeat those evil yellow android. Let's not panic. Okay? Just let us stay put. Oh finally. There he comes. We will do this together. Thanks for coming, Michael. This means a lot. Look at my people, they are not well. You need to help. No worries, it's my pleasure. I want to help anywhere I can. We'll need to work with the people so they also can assist, but more important we need to keep them safe. Now I remember well. Everything just came back to me as a flash. Man. Michael. Michael. Come here my boy, mommy needs your help. I'm in the kitchen. Coming mom. Hey Joe, I have to go. We'll talk soon. Okay Michael. Yes mom. You called me. Yes Michael. I heard voices. Who were you talking to? I was talking to my friend Joe. Who? Joe again. Your invincible robot friend. Yes, mommy. He came to visit me again. Oh, okay, Michael. Are you sure you're fine this morning, my boy? Mom, I'm great, thanks. Let me finish to wash those dishes, then I will make you something to eat. Thanks, mom. You're the best mom ever. Yeah. See you later, Mom. Just let me know when my food is ready. Okay, my boy. Hello, friends. Welcome to another animated series. This is a story of Tom, who never had a friend before. He was living with his mother and father in a small village. It was only them in the whole village. <laughs> Dad, Dad, why are we the only one living in this town? Because it's nice for us to live here, my boy. Patient, son. They will come, my boy. Don't worry. Hi there. I'm your new neighbor. My name is Mr. Thompson. Hi, Mr. Thompson. Nice to meet you. We are the circus family. This is my wife and my son, Tom. Oh, Tom, you are a cute boy. Hope you are happy having me around. Can I ask you a question? Do you have children? Oh, no, sorry. I'm not married. And I don't have children. Oh, I thought you have a child, so he can be my friend. Don't worry, Tom. I have good news for you. You're starting school tomorrow. Yeah, finally. I'm going to meet with some friends. I'm going to take some of my toys to school. Ye but Tom, you are not allowed to take toys at school. I know, Dad. I will only take it out break time to play with my new friends. Ah. You seem very excited to make friends. Hello, my boy. Come to tell me how was your first day at school. Who are your new friends? I, I, I did not make any friends, Dad. But why? 
There were no friends at all. The whole school. I'm the only child and others in principal, teacher and secretary. I am the only child in a classroom and the whole school. Oh, poor Tom. Don't worry, my boy. Mom and I will find you a new school. Okay, Tom. Master Kim, let's hope the mall will be empty. We are in season, so this time of the year the mall are very packed. I know, Scott. I hope so, too. I don't like being in crowded mall, more especially waiting in queues. Yes, true, Master Kim. We are almost there. We need to get back home quick after shopping, Master Kim. Your father will be going to work soon. He wanted to speak to me about something. No worries, Scott. We won't take long at the mall. Okay, Master Kim. Good afternoon, Mrs. Johnson Gnome. Hi, Scott. Are you guys back already from shopping? I hope that boy did not buy all the jewelry from the store. He did not. I picked quality and plus he has a good eye for jewelry cause he picked all the jewelry that they recently stock in store. All new ones. I know my boy definitely he looks very expensive things and when see them. He know how to select good ones. By the way, where is he? I hope you didn't leave him at the store. No. He's still outside. I think he's own his phone. Oh okay. No worries, Scott. By the please do get me one of the cleaner to have my car new. I'll be leave soon, I have a meeting to attend to. Okay. We'll get a cleaner to clean your car now. Hello, mother. Hello, my boy. How was your shopping? It went well, mother. I'm just exhausted from all the shopping. I feel sleepy. Okay, my boy. First come here and show me what you bought. Scott told me you picked all the new stock only from the store. So show me. What have you got? No much mother. But yes I picked most of the new item they had in stock and apparently all just recently arrived in store. I happy I was the first person to get my hands on them. Okay my boy. I'm happy for you. By the way, mother. Where is dad? Your father was here, but he left for work. He has an early morning meeting to attend too. I'm also leaving soon. I'm meeting my friend Rose for coffee at the Palms Cafe. Okay, mother. Hi, Scott. I will be stepping out at the moment. I just want to get fresh air outside. Oh, I see Master Kim. Do you want me to get the car and drive you? No, no, Scott. I will be okay by myself. I will drive. Thanks, I won't take long, we'll be back within an hour. If mother or my father asked about me, just tell them I went to see a friend. We'll be back soon. Hello Scott, what's up? Is everything okay at home? Hi Master Kim. Yes. All is well sir. Just wanted to inform you that your parents phoned and they say they are coming home soon. In the next 20 to 25 minutes, they should be here. They left already. Okay. Scott. Thanks for letting me know. I will be there soon. Thanks, bye. 
Where's that bright light coming from? <laughs> Police to report at address Chenin Avenue corner of Biscuits Road. Two vehicle intersect accident here to report. On it. Reporting. Office heading to the address now. The news about Kim was all over the country, that he died from a car accident. The richest family had lost the son, was a big tragedy to the family. Meanwhile the family not knowing that the son Kim was rescued from that car accident before the car had gone in flame. Where am I and how did I get here? This place looks strange. Hi, I see you are new here. What's your name and where are you coming from? Hi. Sorry, I don't know where I come from and I don't remember my name. Where am I? Oh, I see. Okay, you can stay with us till you regain your conscience. Let's go and get you something clean to put on. Oh, H, thanks. No worries, you'll thank me later. This area is not a good place to be. You have changed. Look at you. You look clean and back to normal. Now what we have to do just help you to get your memory back. So till now you don't your name. Thanks, Jean. Yeah. Thanks to you. I mean you're trying your best so I can recover and get back to myself. I still don't remember my name and where I come from or from which family I come from. Jean, do you think my family are looking for me if I even have a family? Ah. Uh, don't beat yourself. I'm sure your family are looking for you too. I see my father likes you. You two talked a lot back there. So he even gave you a name already, Tom. Ah, uh, not bad. So we will be calling you that till we know you really name, okay? Yeah. Your father is cool to talk to. He was trying to help me to remember. Yeah, I like the name. So this is where you guys do your shopping. I like this marketplace. Yep. This is where we do all our shopping. Let's do some shopping when done we can go where else. I dump the best place that we can go and I know that place will help you remember and regain your memory. This is the place where my dad and I always used to visit has the best view in town. It's what makes me happy, seeing all these beautiful things and just peace and quiet. This place is beautiful indeed, Jean. Wow, the view is amazing. You know, just like you, you're amazing. I mean, look at this. You've been helping me out ever since we met. You mean a lot to me. You're not just a friend, you're more than that. So thank you. No matter what happened, or what type of family I'm from, I won't forget you. Thanks, Tom. Whilst Kim was still living with Jean and her father, Kim and Jean fall deeply in love with each other. Kim was finally regained his memory and knew who he was and from which family after doing research and just speaking to people. He also came across a family picture that his whole family was in it in the Time magazine newspaper. Kim was finally reunited with his family. Finally my friend, it's been a while since we done this. Just me and you out for a drink. True Lisa, we are been working and no play. We are not robot you know. Yeah, we need some fun and play in our lives. Ruth tell, so how's that new boyfriend of yours? Are you still dating? My friend, that guy I dumped him the same day. He's a broke guy. I'm not interested. Hey Ruth, that just rude. Don't do that again. They are watching us. And beside you don't know the guy. My friend listen to me. That guy from the way he looks, he has nothing that he can offer me. 
don't judge the guy, Ruth you don't know him. He's not that bad Ruth. Maybe if you get to know him first, things can be different. Hi ladies. What are you doing here? I told you, I'm not interested. In fact we are not interested so leave us alone. Ruth, don't be rude. Sorry, I'm here to speak to your friend. I said we are not interested. Ruth, it's okay. I'll have a drink with you. I see your friend don't like me. Oh Ruth, please don't mind her. But no offense Ruth is something else. She like expensive things and very picky. I see, she will miss good things in life. Do you mind if we go elsewhere to grab something to eat? I parked outside. Lisa, are you still going out with that poor guy? I met a cool guy and he's rich. We are going out also. Hey Ruth, yes we are. Oh, okay, that nice. Where is your car, John? C car? What car, baby? I'm ordering Uber, but I see I don't have connection here. Let me refresh my network connection. What? So you're poor and you don't have a car? Shame on you. We can give you guys a left. What do you even have? I parked there. Is that your car? Yes, even this bar. But you look poor. I'm the owner I don't wear to impress people and not looking for people to love me. I don't like people to use me for my money. Once upon a time there was two brother named Kevin and Vincent. Vincent was the elder brother, living with both of their parents. Their parents loved them so much that they gave them everything they wanted. They had so much fun together. The twin were best friends and nothing would separate them. They were attending the same school, attending the same karate classes and in the same football team. Everywhere they go, they go together. One day the twins were on their way back home. They had missed their school bus. One of the twin brother Kevin was still busy finishing an exam test. When rushed to the bus, the bus had already left. The cloud suddenly had changed and it started to rain very hard. The boys were soaking wet from the rain. The boys were on their way home, one of the twin brother was walking on the side pavement. As they were walking they were not able to see clearly, of, what was in front of them. One of the brothers slipped and fell on a pavement hole that was left open. The twin brother were unable to see the hole as it was covered with mud and the rain. The rain had reached at a high level above the pavement. Vincent the elder brother called for help. Vincent tried his utterly best to save his brother. Kevin was no way to be seen. No sign of Kevin. He was gone, no way to be seen. The heavy rain just flushed the boy away. Vincent was crying heavily for his twin brother, he could not believe what just happened in front of his eyes. His brother just disappeared. So many thoughts started coming in his mind. What am I going to say to our parents? What are they going to say about me? I'm the big brother. Now going home back home without my little twin brother. By the time I arrive home. I saw my mother preparing dinner. My mother had already placed the dinner plate on the dining table. When I entered the house, the first thing mother asked, where is Kevin? Kevin always the first person to enter the house after school and has always runs towards mom and hugs her. But on that day mom was sad before I could tell her what had happened. I looked at mom and I told her what had happened. Mom was immediately in tears, we both were in tears. I called dad and informed him to come home. When dad arrived home. 
He called some of his friends and the police to come and assist to search for Kevin's body. As we searched and searched, six hours later, the police came and told us unfortunately they had found nothing. The family were devastated, broken by the loss of their son Kelvin. The End As I was on my way back home coming from church. The church service went so well and everybody after church was singing and praising God. The night was very dark especially from the church corner side. I was alone as I was heading to the bus stop to catch a bus. As I stood there waiting for the bus. I waited and waited. 30 minutes later, I then decided just to walk home. Home was not too far away was about 20 to 25 minutes away but at the time and moment in space I knew was bit dangerous to walk but I had no choice but to get home to my family. I was walking on the side pavement where there was bit of light. At certain areas or corners was very dark and you could barely see any light. All the street shop vendors were closed but only one store on the opposite side the traffic light. The store was still open but the security gate was locked to prevent people going into the store because it was night time. People were allowed only to purchase grocery item from the gate but there was this light reflecting towards the store entrance that I could see far as I was approaching ahead the street. The closer I got to the corner of the store the louder I heard this loud sound coming from the across the road opposite the store. It was a night bar, people were dancing, singing, and shouting. I then said to myself at last same light. I moved on without looking twice and I continued to walk. A sudden moment the sky changed and it's begin to drizzle. I continued to walk but this time I immediately started to walk little bit faster as it started to drizzle heavily. As I approached the one corner without looking clearly, four people ahead of me and stopped me brutally. I tried to run but it was too late to slip away. One of them pulled me and another two had knives with them in their hand. As they pulled me, the one with knife stabbed me at the back. I started to bleed but not feeling any pain. I could only feel how the bleed was pouring out from my back. They took everything I had. My small shoulder bag with a long in it my phone and wallet. The most important thing was that I was still alive and breathing. Glory be to God. The End
Let's go play with them. No, Sina. Why do that? Let's stole their ball and run away with it. There are too many, Sandro. Don't worry, my brother. I have some weapon in my pockets that we can use. If they all try their luck. Yeah. Okay, great. Let's do this. Brother, there they are. Let's get the ball and make it ours. Yeah. Let's get it, bro. These boys and girls, they think they are better than us. I take that ball now. Back off, little boy, before I beat you and send you crying to your mama. Look, it's those trouble make boys again. What they want now? We are enjoying playing our football game. Man. Yes, you there. We are talking to you. Don't give us that fun looking face. We are here to get what we want and nobody can stop us. You hear? Yes, my friend. Me too. I can't stand these two. I don't know. What do they want now? Men. These two, they can work in my nerve. Let's see what they want. I'm tired of getting bulled by these two boys. You are saying? I heard you from far coming this side. Don't play with us. We are not playmates if you hear me. Get that. Give us that ball. It's ours now. I take that ball now. Back off little boy, before I beat you and send you crying to your mama. Okay. Sina just take it and leave us alone. Hey, you there. What you looking at? You two little girl. Don't let us come to you there. Hey bro, let's hit the road. We have the ball. Sure bro. Let's go. Hey bro, we got it. Finally. Those little boys and girls are scared of us bro. Did you see the look on their faces? Yeah bro. I saw that. Kick that ball here, let me try it. Let's go home. I'm exhausted bro. Me too bro, been a long day. Sina stop playing on top of the bridge. You are at the edge of the bridge. Careful, you can fall. Watch it. Sina. Sina. I was there, yes, I was there, just like you, who is listening to my story now. Just like some of you, I was a very good looking guy, who lived a good and luxury life. I was a man of style, I loved designer brands. was well-groomed, handsome, dressed, expensive designer clothing. I drove expensive cars, lived in huge and expensive mansion, wearing designer perfumes and clubbing night after night with beautiful ladies from all walks of life. Yes, believe me, it made me feel proud. I was successful and everybody wished to be like me. My life was all about clubbing, hanging out with friends, 
driving fast cars and drinking. Until one day, I couldn't make it to go out with friends. I felt weak, very weak. Quickly, I called my doctor. The moment he arrived, I got hope of getting my strength back. As time went on, after my doctor checked up on me, I waited for him to tell me what was wrong with me. For the first time in years, after being examined by my doctor, I saw him get cold. He couldn't look at me straight on my face. He told me in a cold voice, I'll send you all your examination results in your mail address later by tomorrow. And I didn't see it as a big deal. As usual, I opened my fridge after he left. I grabbed six packs of bottles of beer that day. The next thing I remember, walking on my sofa early afternoon on the next day. I heard my phone ring. The moment I check the phone, I see a mail from my doctor. And this is what it says. Dear John, hope this mail finds you. Sorry for delay with regards of the examination results, as I need to rerun the test for confirmation. I wish we could have done this face to face instead of a mail. The point is with the results, you have contracted an illness that is just as any other illnesses which can be controlled. All you have to do is just to take good care of yourself and follow medication prescriptions and everything else will be normal as before. After I have done the test yesterday, you have been diagnosed with HIV positive. I'm sorry to tell you this, John. If you need any advice or counseling, I'm always available. You can start with the medication as soon as possible. Just let me know when you are available. Thanks. After receiving the mail, I couldn't feel myself anymore. My body felt as if it was being cut off by pieces. My heart started beating twice faster than the normal speed and my face sweating rapidly. My stomach started to make sound as if I ate something wrong. Since that day, my life was not the same anymore. I started to lose interest on everything I own and on everyone. Money, cars, clothing, ladies, all those were now meaningless to me. I decided to live my life as nothing was going on. Alone, I fought the battle. I fought, I fought, I fought the disease. Sadly, I couldn't fight no more. My body became weak and weaker. There was no one left by my side. I became lonely, though I had my family around. I felt emptiness in me. Though in a certain early Thursday morning, laying on my bed, I tried to open my eyes and my mouth, but I couldn't. Try to move both my legs and my arms, so I couldn't move. My body felt so cold, and I closed my eyes. I felt my soul leaving my body, and I realized it was the day I left this world. I could hear a crying sound of my family members and some friends that I can still remember. I pray 
Et pour ce qui est il faut que vous devez rester avec moi. Et vous. Mais il était trop tard. Il took me only 30 seconds to get infected with the disease HIV. Not years, not months, and not even an hour. But 30 seconds that ended all my life. Just a second. Then I came in a realization that it's true. HIV does exist and it kills. But not many people are aware of it and don't talk about it. But it's true. HIV existing among us. Always be protective. Protect yourself and others. If planning to sleep with a partner, ensure to have protected sex. With one partner only, and regularly check your status. Doing so will reduce and minimize the spread of HIV and AIDS and other diseases. Just like you, I was there. Looking back on how my life has changed. I always hear of the hardship of living in a refugee camp. But I never thought that one day I'll also end up living in a refugee camp. I'm from a peaceful country. Since I was born, my life was beautiful. Every morning during the week, I will go to school along with my dad. He will be singing for me while driving his car after school. My baby sister will raise her hands and smile. When seeing me, that was the most beautiful part of my days. And my mom will always give me kisses and she will ask me to tell her about my day at school. Life was perfect until one night while sleeping. I heard my dad whispering with my mom who we were crying. I did not know why. As I stood up from my bed, I find my mom packing things like clothes and toiletries as some light foods. I asked my mom why she was packing. She couldn't say anything to me. My dad told me that tomorrow morning your mom and your baby sister need to go to church. There will be a big bus waiting to take us somewhere. Where we will go live for a short period but he never told me why. Around early morning after that night, I heard so much noise from different voices. Men, women, children. I checked on my room window. I see so many people running all over the town. Some houses were on fire, others collapsed. People getting hurt, some died from gunshots. 
I quickly ran downstairs from my room, calling my mom. Once I opened the kitchen door, I found my mom laying on the floor with her mouth and eyes widely open. I baby sister next to my mom's body, sucking her breast. I started to call my dad for help, searching for him all over the house. Sadly, he was nowhere to be found. I just grabbed my baby sister for the last time. I looked at my mom laying and got close to her body. I managed to close her eyes and her mouth, then I left with my baby sister. I started to run like others until I succeeded to reach the church where my dad told me about the big bus. When we arrived, I see people fighting to enter the bus. I was afraid to talk to anyone. I carried my baby sister, then we entered the bus. The bus drove us for five hours with many stops until we all arrived in a strange place. They asked me, where are your parents? The moment I told them about my story and how I arrived there with my baby sister, the man promised me that both my sister and I were in right hands. When I asked the man to tell me where we are, he told me that we are in a refugee camp. From that day, my life was completely changed. I was not able to go to school again. I started to eat food that was different from the one my mom used to make. My hairstyle was not the same anymore. I felt so lonely. I had no one to share my pain with. I miss my dad's song. I miss my mom kisses and I miss my country too. If anyone out there can hear my voice, I need your help. Please tell them to stop the war. The conflict can get solved peacefully with no fight. Your fight is costing our lives. This fighting is too much. Not just me, we are many children left without parents all because of the conflict. Mothers are crying for losing their children that they carried within 9 months plus the labor pain. Family lost their houses that they worked for so many years to build. As one of the child in this refugee camp, I plead to you, please hear my voice. I am one of the victims crying out loud. Let us heal the world. Dialogue is the main key to peace. Good morning, sir. Morning, madam. How may I assist you? My name is Karen. I'm here for the new vacancy position available. Oh, yeah. Karen, you are the new lady. Nice to meet you finally in person. We've been just hearing a lot about you. My name is Peter. If you need anything, don't hesitate to ask. Thanks, Peter. We'll do that. Let me show you to your office. Look at me now. My new office. I'm going to run this office. When I'm done, I'm going to take over this company and be the CEO of this. This is my destiny. I heard the CEO is smart, but is not smarter than me. I will need to know him more and get close to him. Where is this lazy person I asked to bring me my stationery? All those people that are lazy when I'm the new CEO. I'll get rid of them all. Hi. I overheard you calling someone lazy. Is everything okay? Why calling people horrible names? It's none of your business and does not concern you. So stay out, please. But aren't you the new lady? Karen. Right? Who want to know? By the way what are you doing here and who are you? If you have nothing to do clean the table and get what you came here what and out of this office. Just came to get some documents here, that's all. Okay, just go. Hi, Karen we are going for a meeting. The CEO has requested to meet with us all. Oh okay. Finally. I can't wait to meet the CEO. I will show him that I'm good at my work and what I do. The CEO is not a he, it's a female running this company. You mean a female is in charge of this company? Okay. If this company is being controlled and run by female, 
This means, I can rule over this. Company. I just need to beat her on her own work. I need to get close to her. So first I'll assist her at all times whenever she did help for me to get closer to her. Hi. Oh, I see you still here. I thought you went for lunch now. Do I look like I need lunch? I'm not lazy like you or any other staff here. Okay. Aren't you one of the secretary or a cleaner? I'm not for your information. Well, you look like one and certainly dressed like one too. Why are you being so mean? Since I met you only negative and ruthless behavior I'm seeing and getting from you. You know there is a saying never judge a book by its cover. Just don't tell me that nonsense. Okay, just keep that in mind. Oh by the way, there is a meeting in 15 minutes with the CEO in the boardroom. Welcome everyone. We are just waiting for the CEO to join us. She just had a quick meeting to attend to. When she arrived then she will lead the meeting. Sorry I'm late everyone. Welcome Miss Johannes. We've been just waiting for you. Before I start I want to dismiss Miss Karen here and that she will no long step her foot in this company. You may leave the boardroom Miss Karen. Miss Karen. A friendly advice, never judge a book by its cover. This is the story of the life of Kathy. Kathy was a very beautiful young lady who had lost both her parents at an early age. Kathy was tall, dark in complexion. She had long black hair. She was slim, with the most mesmerizing big hazel brown eyes. Kathy had been living with her uncle, who was married, but did not have any kids. So, he and his wife raised Kathy from the day her parents passed away. Kathy was such a soft-spoken and hard-working young lady. One day, Kathy's uncle got a visit from his neighbor. The man has brought such interesting news that could get his uncle attention who told him. I am in search to find my son who lives in the city, a beautiful, young, virgin lady who would become his wife. And I thought about your niece, if you will mind. The moment Kathy's uncle heard about the word city, without waiting for the man to finish talking, immediately he became very excited about the news he was so interested about the neighborhood wonderful proposition. He quickly went to inform his beloved wife, who also was excited about the news. In the excitement, they both agreed to the marriage proposition, forgetting to inform Kathy about it. After a few days had passed, Kathy had been sitting with a friend in the backyard when her aunt called her. She had something very important to, to tell her. Kathy's aunt told her about the proposal and pointed out about the glamorous life she will have if she accepts to marry the man from the city. Kathy innocently agreed. She couldn't say no to the elderly. This is how she was raised. Four weeks later, the man from the city came. His name was Paul. 
Paul was a very successful and intelligent businessman. He was wealthy and very influential man and had a lot of position and lived very comfortably. He owned two big houses in the city, one family home in the village, three shipment trucks, and three cars. Paul was 14 years older than Kathy. He was very intelligent, mature, and a very good looking man for his age. After arriving to the village, he couldn't contain his excitement to meet Kathy. He had spent only two hours talking to his parents about the woman they picked for him. And by their description, he had fallen in love already with his chosen wife-to-be. The time they arrived at Kathy's house, Paul saw Kathy for the first time. And he was very excited to see such a beautiful young lady. With no hesitation, he told his parents to go ahead with the marriage arrangement. Kathy's family were extremely excited to have Paul as the in-law. Only after one month, everything had been finalized. Paul and Kathy got married and were officially husband and wife. Then, Kathy started to dream of how her life will be with Paul in the city. search to find my son who lived in the city, a beautiful, young, virgin lady who would become his wife. And I thought about your niece, if you were mine. With a friend in the backyard when her aunt called her. She had something very important to tell her. Kathy's aunt told her about the proposal and pointed out about the glamorous life she will have if she accepts to marry the man from the city. Paul and Kathy got married and were officially husband and wife. Finally, Paul took his wife Kathy to the city and the new couple were very happy together. Paul was a caring husband and was deeply in love with his dear wife. He had been taking very good care of her, but strangely enough, Paul was very jealous. He couldn't let her be independent or run errors alone, even simple things like going shopping alone or visiting friends and family. She either had to be with Paul himself or with the personal driver. Kathy was now a full-time housewife. Nine months had gone by and Paul started to get pressure from his family for not hearing any news about his wife being pregnant. Paul impatiently wanted a child too. He then decided to go see the doctor together with his wife for some medical test. My love, listen, I think it's time to go see a doctor. It's the only way we can solve this situation. Kathy agreed. They then went to a close hospital next to their house. After doing all the tests, no problem was detected from him or from his wife. They waited, and some more months went by. Still nothing was happening, and the situation was still the same. Paul, with all the money he had, 
he wanted to get a second opinion and went to visit the most expensive private doctor in town for more tests. They were prescribed some multivitamins and were asked to change the diet and add other things to the menu with hope there will be a change. Stork Kathy couldn't conceive. Listen, I think it's time to go see a doctor. It's the only way we can solve this situation. They were prescribed some multivitamins and were asked to change the diet and add other things to the menu with hope there will be a change. Stork Kathy couldn't conceive. After three years, Poor became more impatient. He was getting old and he desperately wanted to have a child. He then decided to find himself a woman out of his marriage. Only after three months of having an affair with another woman, the woman became pregnant. Paul was extremely excited that he would finally be a dad. He then called to inform all his family members. His parents left the village to come meet with the woman who was pregnant with their grandchild. The moment they arrived at Paul's house and found the woman who welcomed them with her stomach started to show they were a small person in. Poor parents began to feel hate towards Kathy. They then started to put pressure on Paul to let Kathy go out of the house so that a new woman who is pregnant can move in and replace her. With all the hate, Paul also started to develop hate towards Kathy. He decided to let her go out of the house without giving her anything. Kathy cried and started to beg her husband. Please, please, Paul, please. Please feel pity for me. You know you are the only family that I am. Please, I'm begging you. Do not leave me at this moment. I really need you next to me, please. Oh, <laughs> 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 
Love, listen, I think it's time to go see a doctor. It's the only way we can solve this situation. They were prescribed some multivitamins and were asked to change the diet and add other things to the menu with hope there will be a change. Stalk Kathy couldn't conceive. After three years, Poe became more impatient. He was getting old and he desperately wanted to have a child. He then decided to find himself a woman out of his marriage. Only after three months of having an affair with another woman, the woman became pregnant. Paul was extremely excited that he would finally be a dad. He then called to inform all his family members. His parents left the village to come meet with the woman who was pregnant with their grandchild. The moment they arrived at Paul's house and found the woman who welcomed them with her stomach started to show they were a small person in. Poor parents began to feel hate towards Kathy. They then started to put pressure on Paul to let Kathy go out of the house so that a new woman who is pregnant can move in and replace her. With all the hate, Paul also started to develop hate towards Kathy. He decided to let her go out of the house without giving her anything. Kathy cried and started to beg her husband. Please, please, Paul, please. Please feel pity for me. You know you are the only family that I am. Please, I'm begging you. Do not leave me at this moment. I really need you next to me, please. Oh, <laughs> 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 
family members his parents left the village to come meet with the woman who was pregnant with their grandchild After he threw Kathy out, he immediately replaced her with a new woman and gave her everything she desired. Kathy had nowhere else to go since she didn't know the city well and she never had friends except the church she used to go. She went to sink a refuge at church and met with a pastor. She explained everything to the pastor and the other authorities. They all went to see Paul to discuss the issue, but Paul totally refused to listen to them. He even threw water on them. All the church members felt bad about what was happening to Kathy. The pastor decided to offer her accommodation into the church. Kathy started to live inside the church depending on the church members to support her with toiletries and food. A month later, Sister Mary, who was also one of the church members, she was planning to open a new boutique and she wanted someone she can trust to be in charge of her new boutique since she had other businesses she was running. She then thought of Kathy. The pastor was aware of the idea Sister Mary had. He encouraged her to give the opportunity to Kathy. He shook his hand to Sister Mary and he said, I'm so glad that you are thinking about the young girl. May God see your generosity and bless you. After he threw Kathy out, he immediately replaced her with a new woman and gave her everything she desired. A month later, Sister Mary, who was also one of the church members, she was planning to open a new boutique and she wanted someone she can trust to be in charge of her new boutique since she had other businesses she was running. She then thought of Kathy. Kathy was very happy. Thank you so much, Sister Mary. If you don't mind, I can also help you with contacting suppliers and other few things. She said. She started helping Sister Mary with the arrangement each and every day. They were out for planning about the opening of the boutique. The business finally started. Kathy was doing a great job 
doing good sales and Sister Mary was very happy. She then decided to take Kathy to go live with her in her family home. Listen Kathy, I'm very impressed the way you are running my business. I don't want to feel like I'm a boss to you. I want you to be like a sister to me. Come live with me in my house. At least you can have a place to call home. Sister Mary was married with seven small kids. She had a very busy life. Her husband was not always around. Early morning, before going to the boutique, she would first prepare all the seven kids for school. Kathy started to take care of the house, bought them all, making the breakfast, preparing the lunches, cleaning the whole house, make sure everything was in order, then leave for work. It became her everyday routine and she was feeling happy with her new life. Free accommodation, free food, and a reasonable salary that was helping her to take a very good care of herself. Months later, she became known around the city. All men wanted her, and the church members started to call her the new Kathy. Look, there she is. Is she the same lady who was living at the church? Are you sure? It is her. No, this is the new Kathy. Sister Mary, she then decided to take her younger brother to live with them because her husband was not always around to make them feel safe having a presence of a man in the house. When her brother arrived and see Kathy, he had a crush on her and started to go after her every time of the day. Kathy was doing a great job, doing good sales, and Sister Mary was very happy. She then decided to take Kathy to go live with her in her family home. Sister Mary, she then decided to take her younger brother to live with them because her husband was not always around to make them feel safe having a presence of a man
with Paul secretly. way home. After spending their whole day working in a boutique, she met her ex-husband, Paul. Good day, my wife, he flattered her. I was busy looking for you everywhere. Thank God someone told me where I can find you. And I was on my way to see you. They received the result finding out that she was already four weeks Pregnant. Very shocked they both were.
Luis finally paid everything Kathy owed the hospital. Thank you so much, Sister Louise. I don't know what could have happened to us if you were not here. Now I have sorted out the hospital bills. Let me give you a lift on my way home. You need to go home to take care of the baby. Ashu. Sorry. Feeling bad to tell you I don't have a place to go. I was unable to pay my rent. The landlord decided to kick me out. So you see, but it's okay. You've done a lot already. I will figure out what to do. You know what, Kathy? Let me ask the hospital if they can allow you to stay just for a night. I'll be back to get you. Give me 24 hours. Please take care. Bye. I never imagined Kathy's life would turn so bad. She was so happy in her marriage. Oh well. Only God knows what the future holds. Let me go see Sister Marie. So we can help Kathy and her newborn baby. Anybody home? Yes, coming. Hi Sis Marie. Hi Louise. What's a surprise to see you? Please come in. Hi Louise, nice to see you. Hi, likewise. It's nice to see you guys too. I will leave you two ladies to catch up. I'll be at the back Marie. I'm coming straight from the hospital and decided to come and see you. Hospital. Hope you okay. Yes. It's not about me. It's about Kathy. Kathy. Okay, what about her? Is she okay? I met her in the hospital and she told me everything that had happened to her. Please Marie. Try to help her if you can. She is in a difficult situation. She gave birth two weeks ago and the hospital kept her there because she is unable to pay the hospital bills. I paid her hospital bills but now, she doesn't have a place to go to. She gave birth to a beautiful baby girl. As you know, I'm not always around. So it's difficult for me to accommodate her. Please give her a second chance. Let me discuss this with my husband, then tomorrow morning you can come take us there. Okay. Sister Marie will do that. Let me get going now. Early morning Sister Louise and Sister Marie went to see Kathy in the hospital. Hi Kathy. Sister Marie. Sister Marie. We've been thinking a lot about you. Louise told my husband and I, what happened to you after you gave birth. And we decided to take you home with us. Thank you so much, Sister Louise. You too. Sister Marie for opening your kind heart towards me and my baby. Please forgive me for everything I did in your house. Please. It's okay, Kathy. We already have forgiven you. Get the baby, so we can go. Sister Marie's husband called Paul over the phone to give him the good news. That Kathy gave birth to a beautiful baby girl. Let me call Paul, so I can give him the good news about Kathy's birth. Hope this news changes things for the better, but oh well. My wife, I'm going to put Paul on loudspeaker. So you can also hear our conversation. Is that okay? Yes honey, that's okay. Hum, Jack calling. I wonder what the call is about. Let me hear what he has to say. Hello, yes, hello. Paul. Hello, good morning. It's Jack here. How you doing? I'm all good Mr. Jack. How about you? We're all good thanks. Listen Paul. I call to let you know that, we're here with Kathy. She gave birth to a baby girl two weeks ago. It's will be better if you can come over to see your baby. I think, I told you the last time you came to my house. That I'm not responsible for Kathy's pregnancy. There is no need for me to come over and see them. Listen Paul. There is no need to play innocent, anymore. Your baby looks exactly like you. She even have a birthmark. On her neck, just like you. Can you then go for a DNA test? Just to confirm if the baby is yours, or not. 
There is no need to do that, Mr. Jack. With all due respect, sir, please don't call me anymore with regards of Kathy's situation. All I know, I'm not responsible. You can take me to court if you want to. Please do me a favor, Mr. Jack. Do not call call this number anymore. I'm done. Goodbye, sir. Shh. Three months later, Sister Marie and her family going for a family trip. Please, Kathy. We are counting on you to look after the house. Take good care of you and Cecilia. We will be back in two weeks. I hope my wife left everything you need for Cecilia. Yes, uncle. She brought everything for the house too. I promise. I'll look after the house. Safe trip. Are you ready for the trip? My love. Yes, my love. I'm ready. I don't understand what taking these kids so long. I told them just to pack a few clothes, but look now. They want to pack a lot of clothes for the trip. Kids, come on, let's go. We're just waiting for you guys. These kids. Shoo. My love, just go and call your kids. Otherwise, we will be waiting for them here forever. Okay, love. Coming. What's taking you so long? Sorry, Dad. We were still packing. Where's your brother? He's still not yet here. And time's going? Oh, there they are coming. Finally we can get going. Ernesto, you took forever just to pack. Let us get going now. Ernesto, just move on the side so you sister can join you sit at the back. Joyce join your brother at the back seat. Your mom seating here in front. Okay dad. Let me move aside for Joyce before she come and claim the whole seat as she always does. Move more Ernesto. You taking the whole seat. Guys. Can you two stop fighting at the back there? I can't wait to be in a new area for getting. All about work and the new boss stress. <laughs> Days are moving fast my love. You will face him indeed. Anyway, it's a good idea. Taking a break and going for a holiday. After all the challenge you are facing at your workplace, you can now clear your mind. Plus, the kids finally will spend time with you. That's true my love. <coughs> Both Marie, Jack and their children died immediately. And few hours later, the bad news immediately spread to Sorry Kathy's for your ears. laws. Doctor, doctor. The reception informed me that you were the relatives of the patients that was brought here early. It was a big tragedy. Doctor, can I see them?
Why? Why? Why, Sister Marie? Why? You got too soon. After the burial ceremony, Sister Marie family decided to sell all the properties she had. Kathy, you have been staying with our Sister Marie for years. We know all and we are aware of the strong relationship you had with her. As her family, we decided to sell this house and everything that our sister had. We will give you two to three months to find yourself a place to stay. I hope you will respect our decision that we made. Yes, Kathy. That's the decision we as a family decide to do. We just wish you all the best for the future. You and your daughter. Yes, Auntie. Uncle, I understand. There is no need for me to remain here anymore. I respect your decision, before the due date. I will make sure to find myself a suitable place to stay. Thank you for giving me time to prepare myself. It's okay, Kathy. We all going through a rough time at the moment. All we can do now is just to move on with our lives. Three months later. What can we do now? I think you must leave me to handle everything. She promised to find herself another place to go. We gave her three months and her time is up. It's now another two weeks. She is still there. I think brother. You've been too soft to her. She start taking advantage of your personality. Tomorrow morning. I have to go there myself with my boys. In case she resists to move out. There is no need for you to come along with me. You are too soft towards that girl. I will sort things out with her. Okay, but no need to be violence. Just speak to her calmly. And just keep me posted. Oh, good morning, Aunt. Morning, Kathy. I hope you already packed everything. I'm here to collect the keys. We have people who already brought this house. They coming in the city in few days. The house need to be empty from now on. My boys are standing outside in case you need help with your belongings. This house need a deep cleaning. Hum. Sorry auntie. I didn't get myself a place yet. Nobody want to accommodate me because I have a baby. I don't have any capital with me. If you can at least give me few more days, I promise I will leave. No Kathy. I have no choice than to get you go by now on. My boys are outside don't make things hard. You will leave me with no choice. Where I'm gonna go, Auntie? I have no place to go. Please don't do this to my baby and I. I heard about your story and I'm sorry. I really wish I could help you and your baby. Unfortunately the church cannot accommodate you either. The owner of the place sold the whole building. We must leave this place as soon as possible. The church only find a small space. It cannot accommodate more than 50 people and there is no extra rooms there, 
beside my office but I can assist you with baby items in case you need. Okay pastor, I understand. This was the only place that came in my mind. As you know, I don't have any family. Sister Marie was the only family that I had in the city. It's okay. I have to be positive. Goodbye pastor. I feel hopeless. God has taken Sister Marie away from me. She was the only person who considered me as her real family. Sister Louise too, but I don't know where to look for her. The church were the only place that I thought of getting help. I love my daughter, she is the only family that I have. But I'm not able to give her a better life she deserve. Maybe if I give her to a good orphanage, she will meet a family that will love her and give her a better life that I'm not able to give her. I think it's the only option. And I believe one day, if things get better for me, we will see each other again. I promise I won't forget her, no matter what. Yes, hello. Oh, okay, send her up. Hi, sister. Hi, young girl. I heard you wanted to see me. How can I help you? Yes, I'm in a situation which is above my strength. I would like to give my daughter for adoption. You said a daughter. Wow, this is wonderful. We were looking for a baby girl. We have good couple that applied already five months ago. We were in need of a girl. Please give me some time to get you in our interview room. Once you pass the interview, then we will call you in few days to come and fill up some forms. Please follow me. One week later, Kathy finally gave her daughter Cecilia for adoption. The new family paid her certain amount of money, which she organized herself, then left the country for UK with hope of getting a better life. Once arrived in the UK things were not the way she dreamed of UK. Kathy had no other option than to change her way of living life. Kathy finally got a waitressing job in UK. She got herself an apartment in the city center, and she started to take a good care of herself. Her life changed as she became exposed to different types of men that were coming to the restaurant where she was working, buying fancy clothing, experienced jewelry, designer handbags and a beautiful car. All on her was about living a fancy life. She does everything to keep her new lifestyle. One day during Kathy's shift in a restaurant, a good-looking man came for lunch. His name was Sandro. Sandro was handsome. A Spanish guy. Tall, black hair with dimples. And has a nice voice. Hi. What can I offer you? <laughs> Me not ingles. Espanol only. Oh. Habla espagnol? Cula gustania tomar? Kathy tried to communicate in Spanish as she always heard people saying on her favorite show. Sandro was impressed seeing her trying to communicate in Spanish. He got attracted by Kathy's generosity and confident without hesitating. He immediately asked Kathy out for drink.
It was a pleasure going to dinner with you. Thank you so much for giving me such a good time. You have my number you can contact me anytime. <laughs> Same. I'm also happy. Nine months later. Sandro and Kathy finally got married, and were living a happy life. After enjoying their marriage lives, they then decided to have a baby sadly. The doctor informed Sandro that he was not able to become a father, due to an accident he had before. After arriving home, Sandro suggested if they can adopt the child. Kathy told him about Cecilia. They decided to travel back to where Kathy left her baby girl Cecilia. Hi sir, sorry to bother you. We are looking for the Tree Avenue number 8, is this the right place? Yes ma'am. This is the Tree Avenue. Are you looking for someone? Yes, no. Actually yes. I'm looking for an orphanage. I don't know if I'm in the right place. I don't remember seeing this new building, the last time I was here. The place looks strange to me. You say you were looking for an orphanage. This place is a church, madam. Yes, madam. It used to be an orphanage before the accident. There were fire in that place. Everything was burned up. Many people lost their lives, including children. The accident was not good at all. We heard only 25 people survived. And that 25 children were only eight. Ash. Such a pain lost. It's okay. Don't cry. It's okay. She's maybe one of the survivors. Let look for a way. We can find out more about what really happened. We can go to the police nearby. They can identify the victim's identity. Cecilia can still be alive. 